Hello everyone, this is a tutorial uh, for how to install and use the uh, Revy Bosch notification project. As you probably read in project description, this project helps you to add Bosch notification support to your Android applications without writing any backend or uh, server side code. So let's get started. After you download the file for the project, you will find one main file that contain all sub files which are the uh, push notification project for the back end the push notification guide which we are exploring now and android project source code and android apk for uh, testing we will just follow the guide here to show you how it's easy to integrate your uh, android push notification project to your android application well uh, first step here is to get the ABI key. We will just open console.developers.google.com and we will create a new project. We will just name it say TD Push for example. Ok we agree and we will click create. As you can see the current project is being done here. We'll just wait until it finishes. Here we go. Uh, automatically, the uh, Google Developer Console directs you to the project page. Here, you can find the project number. This one you need later for Android project. It will be considered as the sender number. So you just could have it and save it for later use, or just open, keep it open on your browser. Now, for getting the ABI key, you first you need to enable the ABI you want to use. So I will click ABI authentication, API, and I will search for Google, sorry, cloud messaging for Android. This is the service we need. To send the push notification, you need to enable Google cloud messaging for Android on your API console. Just click, click the off button here. ok let's accept you will find it here as enabled service google cloud messaging now is on this is the first step then you go to credentials and under public api access you click create new key server key and you click just create you can add here the allowed api to use the the product but it's okay you can just can leave it empty here here we go now you get the api key i will just keep it here as well so this is the only two uh, strings you need from google api console for now so we are done here for the first step i will close that Then, second step is to upload and install the application on your server. For this, you need to create a new database in your uh, hosting service. So, for example, I use Bluehost. I will go to my uh, cPanel view. Of course, you can use any other host provider you prefer or even use your own uh, hosting server. I will just search here for database. Here we go. I like about Bluehost is that we have uh, MySQL database wizard which will enable us to create database easily. First step is create the name of the database. Let's say TD Bosch. Next. We need a user for the database. Let's name it TD Bosch as well. Password. Generate password. I like use the generator as well here. I will copy the password. Okay, I have copied. Use the password. I will keep this password here. I will click create user. So now, now we have this user with this password, and this is the database name. I will just click all privileges here. Next. 
here we go now we have completed the second task of creating the database okay. following the guide second step here is to upload the file on your server so I will go back to my cPanel and I will click file manager okay I just open my root folder here and I will create new project to host our push notification service let's say it also TD push create new folder I will open that folder click upload we need to upload this file to the server Ruby push okay so I will click browse here select the file here we go open as you can see it started uploading here it will take a few minutes just wait Seems we have a uh, slow connection here. Shouldn't take a lot. Here we go. Now the file upload complete. Let's uh, go back to our file manager here on the server. I will click reload, just refresh. Here is the file. I will click extract it. Extract. Okay. Reload, refresh. Here we go. Now we have all the file extracted here on our server on a subdirectory called tdbush so I will start the installation process by going to my main server slash tdbush the folder we contain and we uploaded our, sorry, our product on here we go starting the installation process I've saved here my password sorry my database username and the password so this is the database name and database user and the password install here you create the admin credentials let's say the admin name is apn dot at gmail .com. and the password Okay, submit. Congratulations, now you have the installed the required uh, server files. Uh, first screen here is to, of course, is the settings to add the API key we have generated from step one. So I will open the file here, get the API key, paste it here. Also on the same screen you can write a site name that will should appear here and you can change this logo by uploading the new file or so. I will just keep it as it is. I will click save. Now we are ready. So let's start by sending a notification. Of course we need users first. So I need to here in my Android application. I have an Android device. I have installed the ABK here for testing. The one you find in the project files. Here we go. After you install the ABK on your device, you need to uh, enter the sender ID here and the server uh, URL here. Uh, so I will get uh, project number here, the sender. 
here we go and for the server I will get this URL the one we have uploaded our project on here and I will click register as you can see here the status says and uh, this user or this device has been registered successfully so I should be able to see this device here if I click users yes correct congratulations first user you have the first user for your Bosch notification project so I uh, will start uh, by sending notification of course to send notification you need to build a notification type first so I will go to types and I will add new type let's say let's call it news notification or just news um, here we can add the fields of the message to be sent let's say we will send this notification the title of that of the news or sample title here while I'm writing you can see here a JSON preview for the message that will be sent to your uh, Android application I uh, click add for adding another field say description and here sample description you can add many fields as you want I will just save this type okay now I can send notifications to my users when I select notification type here I'll be uh, say let's say new project has been deployed and here okay let's just say it you can select here to all send all to all users or just one user I will click send I can see the report here says that this notification has been sent to one active user so I should be able to see the notification here in my on my device yes positive here we go this is another message here some title to sample description to the send here we go the notification all right as you can see here the title is sample title 2 and uh, some extra information and sample description too exploring other features here from the notification types window you can add new type I usually uh, use a type called update which informs uh, our Android application that there is a new version of Android uh, application let's say we send usually version 1.4 for example click add and uh, requires or required say one okay save now from the send window I can select this type update and send when I, whenever I have new version of my Android application I just add the version here and see if it is required or not and click send as you can see here the notification arrived required equal 1 and the version equal 1.5 Of course you will handle this notification the way you want in your Android application so this is just, this is just a sample you should pass this JSON and based on the notification type you take the uh, required action uh, from here you can see the users uh, and you can add user manual actually which is a hard job uh, just list just try it uh, okay in registration ID username user1 email user1 at email.com save so let's try it let's try now to send a notification to this user okay whatever data we will enter here send well the first one succeeded and received notification 
there is one uh, failure here to, to know the reason why this uh, uh, send fail of course we know the reason this is not a valid user but let's to know it from the back end you can say uh, check the inputs here you will see all notifications has been sent for this one that succeeded and there is one failed here why this is the reason invalid registration which mean invalid registration id we entered from users here we have entered invalid registration id which should be sent from uh, android application from the users window here we can uh, edit user information id username or email uh, of course do not uh, edit registration id ever it should be sent from android application as we just explained uh, you can delete this user if you want we really don't need that we can mark user as uh, inactive by uh, clicking this off button uh, marking user as inactive uh, will disable sending notification to uh, this user and uh, by the way we have rest api to manage all this uh, functionality from adding user registration of users unregister for user making user as inactive or sending notification all via uh, restful api you can find it from the documentation here at the end can send notification, delete user, register new user, all by simple restful ABI. Back here, you can filter the would see by the failed ones or succeeded ones, or you can even filter by dates and settings window you can change site name as we just said in the beginning of the video and you would like to hear also uh, your feedback if you have any feedback or comments please send it to us thanks for watching